Ladies and gentlemen, um, a very warm welcome to this event and thank you indeed for coming, coming today. Um, I wish to say that my congratulations to all the recipients of the awards today. I know how hard that job is that you do. I also want to pay tribute to your perseverance in bringing these important issues to the public's attention. And I also want to pay tribute to the human rights defenders who operate throughout the poll in very, very difficult circumstances. With bravery, with courage, with determination, end human rights violations here in the poll. I want to talk to you today about preventing sexual violence in conflict. And the initiative launched early this year by the UK's Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, William Hay. This will be a centrepiece of the United Kingdom's forthcoming leadership of the G8. Sexual violence in conflict is widespread. Most frequently, it is carried out not by invading armies, but by one group against another. The deliberate intention of destroying, degrading, humiliating, and scaring political opponents or entire ethnic and religious groups. It affects not only large numbers of women, but also men and children. In addition to the physical and psychological trauma suffered by survivors. Sexual violence leads to increased ethnic, sectarian and other divisions, further entrenching conflict and instability. Despite the best efforts of the international community, the UK government believes there is more that can and must be done to combat this issue and particularly to address the culture of impunity for these crimes that have been allowed to develop. For this reason, on 29 May, the Foreign Secretary launched his Preventing Sexual Violence Initiative in London in the presence of UNHCR Special Envoy Angelina Jolie. The Foreign Secretary's initiative aims to replace the culture of impunity with one of deterrence by increasing the number of perpetrators brought to justice both internationally and nationally, by strengthening international efforts and coordination to prevent and respond to sexual violence, and by supporting states building to build national capacity. To achieve this, the United Kingdom will launch a sustained campaign through the UK's presidency of the G8 in 2013 to build a global partnership to prevent sexual violence in conflict. Our objective will be to secure a range of new commitments from G8 partners to strengthen international efforts to prevent and respond to sexual violence in conflict which we hope to broaden beyond the G8 over time. We are also assessing the need for a new international protocol on the investigation and documentation of sexual violence in conflict. We will also establish a specialist team of UK experts to deploy to conflict areas to support the UN and civil society to investigate allegations of sexual violence, gather evidence and help build national capacity to do so. We will also increase our support to the UN Secretary General's Special Representative on Sexual Violence and Conflict to bolster her efforts to strengthen national capacity to investigate, prosecute perpetrators of sexual violence and to protect survivors and witnesses. On 25 September, at the United Nations in New York, the Foreign Secretary announced £1 million of core funding to the SRSG's office for this purpose. The UK wants to rally sustained and coordinated international action to drive this issue on the global agenda over the coming year. 
especially during the opportunity offered by our presidency of the G8. We are consulting widely with a range of countries, G8 and beyond, to seek views and explore possible areas of cooperation. We are also speaking to NGOs, UN agencies and other partners on how we and others can step up action without duplicating existing efforts. As part of our international outreach, William Haig co-hosted an event at the UN General Assembly on 25 September with the UN Secretary General Special Representative on Sexual Violence and Conflict, Mrs. Zainab Bangula, UN Women, Ms. Madame, uh, sorry, Madame Bachelet, and the International Campaign to Stop Rape and Gender Violence, which is part of the Nobel Women's Initiative. This high-level event was attended by four ministers and senior representatives, yes. including from conflict-affected affect, countries, Nobel Peace Laureates, and more than 30 NGOs to raise international awareness of and galvanise support for the initiative. Also, in the run-up to our G8 presidency, the UK hosted a high-level conference on this subject at our conference centre in Wilton Park from 12 to 14 November to inform our thinking and seek input as we develop our plans. The government of Nepal was represented at that meeting. As we work up a wider campaign, we are developing an extensive programme of wider engagement on the issue of sexual violence and conflict. For example, we anticipate further activity in The Hague and Geneva, as well as in G8 and conflict-affected countries. We intend to consult widely. So far, we have successfully recruited 65 members for the UK team of experts, 45% of whom are women. They are on track to be ready for a trial deployment by the end of this year. The team includes police, lawyers, psychologists, doctors, forensic experts, gender-based violence experts, and experts in the care and protection of survivors and witnesses. These experts can be deployed singularly and in teams to support ongoing international and national efforts in priority countries. We are currently in the process of identifying where deployments might take place. We envisage that these will be at the request of a national government or to contribute to the existing efforts of international partners, for example, in the support of the UN or Justice Rapid Response. We have also established a dedicated team within the Foreign and Commonwealth Office to deliver this mission, drawing on experience from the Home Office, our Interior Ministry, from the Foreign Office, from the Department for International Development, and the Joint Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Ministry of Defence, and Department for International Development Stabilisation Unit. As you can see, we are committed to make a change on this issue. Because despite extensive efforts, the international community has had limited success in tackling impunity for sexual violence in conflict. Very few perpetrators have ever been put on trial. This culture of impunity means a cycle of sexual violence continues, from Bosnia to Rwanda to the Democratic Republic of Congo to Libya and to present-day Syria. Since the mid-1990s, the UN, other agencies, and a wide range of NGOs have worked to support and empower women survivors and to increase their participation in peace building and conflict resolution. Important legal precedent has been set at international tribunals and the International Criminal Court. Unfortunately, a lack of accountability remains. While there have been considerable strides forward in the last 20 years in establishing mechanisms at national and international levels to combat impunity from international crimes and human rights violations, 
We believe that more can and should be done in the area of tackling sexual violence. The obstacles, however, to address sexual violence remain particularly significant. We therefore want to galvanise greater collective action. Thank you once again for coming here today. I'm very proud that the British Embassy in Kathmandu was able to support this event. Human rights, the protection of human rights, the advocacy for worldwide standards, international standards, adherence to those standards, is central to our foreign policy. I ask you to reflect on the information I have given today and spread the message about what the UK is doing to tackle and bring, bring to an end this abhorrent weapon. And it is a weapon. If you have ideas you wish to contribute, we would welcome that. From a country which is come out, coming out of conflict, which is building a peace, please give us your ideas so we can feed them into our colleagues in London who are dealing with this issue. A copy of my speech will be distributed. We've also prepared a fact sheet which you can take away with you. If you have any questions, please do approach us. Please come and see, please be in contact with my colleague Karita, my groom, or Jolene Jossi, and let us have your ideas, let us have your views. Because only getting the views from people who, are, who have been affected by, through conflict, who have suffered these crimes, can we actually get this initiative right and ensure that it never, that we can do all we can to ensure that sexual violence in conflict is the thing of the past. Thank you very much indeed.